everyone, welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, it is definitely going to be a furry friend of ours because we are covering the oh so wonderful ring tailed lemur. This, of course, is a very special listener episode dedicated to Michael, Matthew, Louis, Daisy, Henry, Hannah, Emma, Samantha, and Terry. I hope all of you enjoy your very own episode. It wouldn't have been possible without you. For how to request your very own episode and for all of the facts that were used in this one, you can either go straight to the description or the show notes where they are immediately available, or you can wait until the end of the show in which I will talk about it. And for those of you that love the show and would like more of it for only a dollar a month, you can go to patreon.com slash relax with animal facts or just click on the Patreon link in the description. Our last episode was on regeneration and looking deeper into the mechanism of the axolotl. It is so cool and I look forward to seeing more of you there. Just a quick announcement, there will be no episode next week because I will be on vacation. We will have to pause our adventures for just one week. And now, as always, I have three primary exhortations for you. The first is that you get a pair of your favorite running shoes. We are going to be needing some versatility for where we are going today. And second, I encourage you to recognize perhaps where you are carrying some tension. Is it in the shoulders, in the head, the neck? Everyone in this way is different, but my encouragement to you is the same. You can bring up in your mind some jello and just do your best to impersonate it with all of your intrinsic acting skills. It is much easier to go on journeys together when we are not stiff as a board. And the third thing I ask of you is that you give your mind permission to wander and journey with me onto the African island of Madagascar where the ring-tailed lemur resides. Madagascar is home to so many different creatures. It is one of the most diverse places on our planet. We were here before when we ventured into these same dense brushes in order to find the eye eye, and now we are looking for another lemur, the ring-tailed lemur. And you can hear the diversity of the species even just from the ambiance. For me, as a Canadian who is not used to these sort of soundscapes, it is like stepping foot onto another planet, but a planet I very much enjoy being on. So let us go over some general things with the ring-tailed lemur before we actually see one. The name that I am using, ring-tailed lemur, is the common name. Its scientific name is lemur cata. That former name, Lemur, we are actually going to cover at the end of the show, as we always do. But that latter word, Kata, I have to admit, got the best of me. I could not figure out exactly why they were given this distinction. It means so many different things, and I didn't want to just choose one arbitrarily. And so, as far as I am concerned, I have been stumped by the Lemur or rather by the researchers of the lemur. This animal is a mammal. They are herbivores, which we can be thankful for. They will live up to 18 years in the wild and grow to be about 17 and 3 quarters inches, with a tail that is actually longer than their whole body, about 21 and 3 quarter inches. They will weigh between 5 to 7 and a half pounds, and when they travel together, they travel as a troop. Not as a group, but as a troop. Lemurs are, of course, primates. The reason we are here on the African island of Madagascar, 
as opposed to anywhere else in the world is simply because they are not found anywhere else in the world. They are relegated specifically to this island, they are geographically isolated, but that's okay because Madagascar is home to many, many other creatures that are also geographically isolated to this island. And now, what separates the ring-tailed lemur from all other lemurs is, of course, their ringed tails. Their very long tails are striped black and white, giving them that utterly distinct character. It might be of interest to discuss what a lemur is exactly, because the eye-eye that we covered before is also a lemur. Basically, it is any primitive primate that is not the tarsier, or any indigenous primates of Madagascar. And today, there are over 100 lemur species. The word lemur is applied to many creatures, including the ai, the indri, sifakas, avahis. All of these creatures are awesome to cover in a future episode. But the point is, is that this distinction is applied to more than just the typical suspects. But going back to the ring-tailed lemur, their coats are gray to a brownish color with gray limbs and dark gray heads and necks. Their faces are white with dark triangular eye patches and a black nose. They will sport white bellies, and these will all tie in very nicely to their alternating black and white bands that go all through their tail. Now this article is quite specific in saying it is 13 alternating black and white bands. This particular lemur is the most terrestrial of all of the lemurs. So terrestrial is over against arboreal, which means spending time in trees. And so these guys spend the most time on the ground or on the earth than any other lemur species up to half of their day. I suppose they just like walking around. And when the lemurs are together and travel in their troops as they are called, the size of these troops can range from about 3 to 25 individuals. Some sources say up to 30, but we will use 25. As opposed to many other primate species that we have covered in which there is only one dominant male and the rest are female, these troops will have multiple males and multiple females. Also quite uncommon for primates, the females are the ones that are dominant within groups. What dominance here means is that females are given the preferential access to things like whom to mate with and access to food. As to how is at the top of this dominance hierarchy, the daughters seem to fight it out amongst themselves and instead have to duke it out based on merit. The ring-tailed lemur is a promissian, and promissians groom in a way that is not so usual. They have six lower teeth, canines and incisors that stick straight out of their jaw, and this forms a very crude kind of comb, and then this comb is used to groom and enhance the social bonds within the group and to prevent certain disease, and then this natural comb that they form with their teeth is then used as a grooming tool to help bolster social relationships and to, of course, improve the hygiene of those within the group. And so, in many ways, grooming is a kind of communication, and the ring-tailed lemur has many forms of communication apart from that. They communicate non-verbally or mostly visually in a number of ways. Some of you may be quite familiar with how the ring-tailed lemur walks around, but their tail is always standing very upright, raised in the air, and this is sort of like a flag. Other members can see exactly where everyone is, and they know where the group is. It's hard to stray from the group when everyone is waving their banner, or rather their tails. There are also many facial expressions that will be used, 
This article cites six different ones of which I'm not going to go through all of them, but just so we can get a taste. They have a face in which they are silent and almost looks as if they're smiling. But in the primate world, when their mouth is drawn back and their teeth are shown, this is not used to communicate aggression, but quite the opposite. It is to communicate submission or friendliness. They have a pouty face that accompanies when they are begging for something or calling for someone else. They have a whole host of these. And then, of course, we come to the verbal aspects of their communication. They can howl, they can call, and it will range from sort of a shout to a soft purr. Their verbal calls can be used for territorial reasons, for repulsion, for an alarm if there is a predator nearby. And the last form of their communication is through smell. They have scent glands on their chests and on their wrists that are used for marking their routes. The male ring-tailed lemurs have a spur that is like a horn on each of their wrists that can be used to pierce tree branches before they mark them with their scent. They will also rub their wrist glands on their tails before they fling that scent at an opponent. This may be called stink fighting, and basically they will just do this and stare at one another until one male will run away. Now they are mostly herbivorous, as we learned before, so their diet is going to include things like bark, leaves, flowers, fruit, but they will also eat the occasional invertebrate, so certain kinds of insects. Now, a troop of these ring-tailed lemurs will gather in open areas of the forest in order to sunbathe together. They will sit with their bellies out toward the sun and their arms and legs outstretched to the sides. They look quite comfortable, so they will warm themselves up and sunbathe before they go and forage. The females will have their first baby oftentimes when they are about three years old, and then after that, usually once a year, they will very often only have one baby at a time, but sometimes they can have twins, and in fact, twins can be frequent depending on how plentiful their diet is. And after the baby ring-tailed lemurs are born, they will be clinging to their mother's bellies, but after only a period of two weeks, they will often opt for a jockey-style riding on their mother's backs. And all of the adult females will be involved in collectively raising the offspring of the group. And now let us move on to the name lemur. What does it mean or where does it come from? The way in which we use the word lemur was coined in 1795, and it comes from a Latin word, lemures, that means evil spirits of the dead in Roman mythology. I believe we have covered this before on the I.I. episode, but there is no shame in covering it again. And one of the oldest usages for the word lemur, it comes from a catalog of Linnaeus, and in this work he explained his use of the word lemur in this way. I call them lemurs because they go around mainly at night, in a certain way similar to humans, and roam with a slow pace. Now keep in mind that while I am reading this in English, this was written originally in Latin, and so we can see why he would use the Latin word lemures here, that means evil spirits of the dead, because they move in a way that is close to us, and they wander around mainly at night time. That is quite interesting. The charity for today is coming from the Lemur Conservation Foundation, which is specifically dedicated to the preservation and conservation of the primates of Madagascar through a multitude of ways, breeding, scientific research, education, and art. Their website is lemurreserve.org. I'm going to put it in the description or the show notes. There are so many ways to help, and so I am just going to leave that there for your exploration. And now let's move on to the review portion of the show. 
This was written by El Tedios, who is writing all the way from the United States of America, and El Tedios writes, I work in healthcare and some days are rough, to say the least. I am so happy to have found this and have so enjoyed learning about amazing creatures as I unwind in the evenings and feel the stress melt away. Thanks for creating such a great space. Thank you, El Tedios, for the very kind review. I'm so happy that you found the show and that it helps you in that way. Healthcare has never been a very relaxed profession, but of course, over the past few years, it has definitely not been that. And so I thank you for all of the work that you do in that healthcare field, and I'm grateful that I have you as a listener of the show. If you love the show, taking a moment or two to leave a review like El Tedios did helps the show in so many ways. It helps people find the show to begin with. It helps me know what you like and what you don't like. And so I greatly encourage you to do what you can wherever you are listening, on Spotify with ratings, on Apple Podcast with reviews. You have no idea how much those one or two minutes helps the show. If you would like to request your very own animal episode, you can do so by going to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and clicking on the Animal Request tab. I try my best to get back to each and every one of you. Sometimes I am a bit late, but I try to always respond. If you would like to get in contact with the show in any other way, you can do so by sending an email to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com or by sending a message to Relax With Animal Facts on Instagram. If you are not already following the Relax With Animal Facts Instagram account, I greatly encourage you to do so. There you have updates on the show, you have giveaways, you have polls and quizzes, so I encourage you to follow that account. So I look forward to seeing you there. The sources that were used in this episode come from animals.sandiegozoo.org, Britannica.com, nationalzoo.si.edu, nationalgeographic.com, lemur.duke.edu, and etimonline.com. All of these sources are what made this episode possible, and they are all linked in the description, and you are encouraged to explore them to your heart's content. What an amazing creature we have covered today. The ring-tailed lemur is a favorite probably because of the familiar movie Madagascar. We did not cover the fact that they like to move it, move it, but perhaps they do. Thank you all for taking the time to join me on this journey, and I look forward to seeing you all on the next podcast episode with the next animal. Take care.